Good morning, friends. How you guys doing? It is a beautiful, listen to that. It's a beautiful fall day on the prairies. Harvesting's almost done. A lot of standing corn left, some beans. Yeah, the boys are getting there. Just a lovely day to be outside. I wanted to jump out here today, friends, and do a little video that I've kind of done it, but haven't. This video is going to be answering a question I get all the time. I get emails all the time and comments. Tin Man, what's your favorite saw? Uh, which saw should I buy? Do you like this saw? Do you like that saw? So I just thought I'd do a video. Let's talk about saws. Not necessarily ported saws or any of that kind of stuff, friends. Let's talk about saws that I like. Saws that I own that I don't run, and I'll tell you why I don't run them. And and what I do with saws, okay? I am a firewood cutter. I Most of what you see me doing is for firewood. If, it, if it's wood and will burn, I will cut it and burn. Which saws do I like and why, okay? Some of this is my heart, some of this is my head, okay? I'm gonna bring you guys right in here so that you guys can see the deal. Now friends, my first exposure to a power saw was this, okay? This is my dad's saw. It's Home Light Super Mini. Look at that. Friends, as a young boy, I used to look up on the shelf and see that checkered flag. Look at that. Come on with the chrome. Once in a while, dad would pull this thing down and he'd cut something with it and it was loud and smoky and I just thought this was the greatest thing ever. This saw doesn't run anymore, friends. It needs a coil. I think I have one. I gotta look. I really wanna get this saw running. It has no purpose for me other than nostalgia, okay? But yeah, this is my old man saw, and look, it's like brand new. He cut firewood briefly in the early 80s when I was really young with this thing. When we were still, uh, or when he still lived in the house in Headingley. And, uh, okay. So, for some people, that's all you need, okay? This saw will cut. It, it's, it's a small displacement saw. I think it's like 40 cc's. I don't run this kind of stuff, friends, very often. I'm known for being a home light porter. I don't run home lights very often. They vibrate too much. I got carpal tunnel. Um, these, this little saw vibrates enough. It can be quite painful to run for me, so I don't run it often. So that one's out for me. That is a nostalgia saw, so I will never sell or do anything with that saw other than run it once in a while because it's my dad's saw. Here's a trio of vintage orange saws, okay? And for the average guy, if you had these three saws, you'd probably be fine. Uh, I just purchased this. Uh, I did a video with it. You may or may not have seen that by the time you see this. This is a Pioneer Farm Saw, 66 cc's. Um, it's got an auto oiler, it has anti-vibe, decent anti-vibe, it's not the best. It's a very torquey saw. This thing will pull this 28, no problem, as long as you're sharp and your rakers aren't too low. This could be a contender. If you, if you like vintage saws, maybe this is the saw for you. I run stuff like this for fun, not for production work though. You know, when I really, when I need to get wood on my truck, like this time of the year, I will run this for fun but not always for production work. As you guys know, it's the Noisy Cricket Husqvarna 44. This is the smallest saw that I own and run. Um, this saw does a lot of work on the farm here, okay? This saw is good for hedge lines. I run an 18 on it, 325. But here's the thing about this saw that I like. I have cut 20 inch oak with this saw and it motors through. These are the torquiest little power saw I've ever owned or run, period. I don't know what kind of witchcraft that Husqvarna did, but these things are incredible. This one's like brand new. Uh, a subscriber sent it to me a year or two ago and it's like, I love it. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. When I open the box, and it's funny because you know, it's a, it's a farm and ranch homeowner type saw. This thing's amazing and I run it quite often and it, it runs good it starts it weighs nothing like this is probably an eight pound saw it, it it's just a good saw so um this one for me this is a thumbs up so we put this in the pile of saws i run all the time if you're a firewood cutter this right here the 61 rancher 61 practica okay this saw they made this saw for like 20 years husqvarna did 
if you had that as your only saw and you're a firewood cutter, you'd be doing fine. Now friends, this is where I come from. I get flack about the long bars and the small wood a lot. For what I do, for my cutting, I like a long bar. And the main reason is, friends, my back doesn't like to do this. You know, the years of bashing tin and all that stuff, my back just doesn't like to, to stoop or bend over. So I tend to not run these short bars. But, you know, this saw with this 20-inch VersaCut and a good sharp chain will put wood on the truck. But you know what's funny, friends? I've never run this saw. I've never put this saw in the wood. I've had this saw for years. It's just on the shelf. More of a collector's saw. And uh, it is what it is. So I guess that one's out. I don't run it. I love it. Don't run it. Now we get into the newer Fandango bigger saws. 576 XPG. This is a heated handle model. 576 Husky. This is kind of like the Rodney Dangerfield of... 70 cc saws it gets no respect no regard nobody wants them i have an entire giant box full of parts for these that i've never done anything with this is the second one i've owned here friends here's something i like about these saws okay you put that on your truck it's ready to rock and roll i don't care if it's minus 40 plus 40 Okay, these are this is an auto tune. This thing runs like a Swiss watch, okay? And it's fast and it'll pull a 32 inch bar all day long. This has a muffler mod and that's it. Okay? But notice there's no bar on it. Friends, I don't run this. I don't know why. It's a great saw. I pull it out once in a while. Every time I do, I go, Jesus thing's fast. But you know why I don't run this? Because it's a pound heavier. It's a pound heavier than most of the saws I run, so it feels clumsy in my hands. It is strong though, but we're gonna have to throw that in the pile of saws I don't run. 365 X Torque. Okay, 365 X Torque. Uh, I bought the saw from a local, and look, it's like brand new, absolutely brand new. He was a firewood cutter and a, uh, um, a guy that milled. And he got another saw and this one went on the chopping block. Now friends, I ran this saw. It's it, it's really lean on the box. It's got decent power, but it's kind of more peaky. Uh, it idles, it doesn't come back down the idle. It doesn't have an air leak. I think it's that X-Torque lean kind of carburetor thing they did with these. It just doesn't run that good. So I know I can make it run good and I know I can port it and this is a 3 or 372 with different transfer caps. So friends, I can make this run better, but I don't have time right now. So it's like, we gotta throw this one in the pile of saws I don't run, okay? This is another saw I just picked up. My buddy William hooked me up with this. Shout out to William, he's a good fella. Um, good friend to this channel, and to me, he's a nice fella. Um, I just picked this up, Johnster at 2165. This is a 365 special dressed in red, friends. And it's mint, like it's dirty because it's been used, but it's like, it's mint, okay? The only thing wrong with this saw, it's missing a screw here. It's missing a screw here and uh, the chain catch is a little uh, bent, but like it still has most of the case paint on it, so. Now this saw here, friends, this is a 365 Special, and this is what I cut my teeth on when I got into professional saws. The first professional, go back, the first video on this channel is me cutting firewood with like an 18-inch bar and my 365, cutting ash in the backyard here. That's where this channel started. For a firewood saw, friends, this is probably the best saw ever made. It's, it's got a really broad, broad power band. And therefore it's easier for the average guy to use, okay? You don't have to be so uh, in tune with what your, what your saw's doing. You don't have to keep your saw in the pipe. This thing's grunty like a four stroke dirt bike versus peaky like an old two stroke dirt bike. So this 100% goes in the pile of saws I do and will run. Also friends, the weight, these saws are pretty light for what they are, okay? Um, they're light, so therefore you're gonna run all day and some of the best anti-vibe ever made. So again, thumbs up. Okay. 
372 original edition this is the one bucking left me and i must say friends this thing 100 percent. this thing is gonna be one of my go-to saws um stock it runs great uh i i didn't even put a screwdriver on this i think i gave it a little bit of an adjustment and uh you know i i put this modded muffler on there and and away it went this sovereigns it's lightweight i did put a wrap on it i'm getting more into the wrap bars i like being able to flip this thing around i cut in really dense bush and it's not always safe or 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 easy to cut from either side of the tree right so i need to, uh, or from one side of the tree a lot of times when i'm cutting friends there's da there's danger over my head that i don't want i wasn't aware of this stuff but you know being friends with bucking and talking to him all the time it's like look up look up something's gonna smack you in the head and now uh, i look up and it's like if there's danger on that side of the tree i just go to the other side and cut so this saw thumbs up i will run the snot out of this because it's easy to live with even stock friends i'm gonna run this saw you see it's dirty i've been cutting with this thing pretty steady since i got it not every saw has to be ported this one doesn't need to be ported it's just it's a good saw and i'm gonna run the snot out of it for firewood so this one thumbs up this is one saw that i've probably put the most time on out of every saw i own it's purdied up now i got parts said to me uh this side cover uh is way nicer than the one i have i actually bought a wrap for it and i got a newer top end for this saw so um, I'm going to run this saw soon, maybe for the rest of firewood season, and this winter we're going to rebuild this saw together on the channel. Um, it's my 562, and you guys know that uh, this is an auto-tuned saw. This is either a loved or hated saw. A lot of guys say, I had one, I blew it up, or they're unreliable. Um, I got interested in these saws uh, watching Walt's channel. He was building these, and it's like, that looks like a nice saw. Walt was running 372s at the time, but he started doing slight mods to these, uh, a little bit more compression, and modding them, and getting good performance, and it's like, friends, this saw is so light. This is the smoothest chassis I've run. I don't know if there's smoother ones out there, but, and like, I'll run a 28 on this, and it runs fine. It pulls it. it you have to be sharp with these saws, little friends. This saw for a firewood cutter, me, I can walk into the bush through this every time. It'll start, run, it runs the longest on a tank of fuel of any saw that I own. And this thing absolutely gets the job done for me. Whether I'm falling, limbing, or bucking, this saw will do everything that I need to do. So again, this goes in the pile of stuff I do run. This is one of my only steels I have left. Uh, I used to have that nice ported 461. Uh, I sent that down the road, sent it home with Bucken because I wasn't using it that much and uh, his kid wanted one. So I was like, take this home and, and let Hogan run it, you know? To me, friends, these saws, they're just saws. And it's like, if I'm not running a saw, why not send it to somebody who will, right? I mean, saws don't need to sit on the shelf all the time. So, um, this is my only running still that I own that's left. I have stills in boxes, but, uh, you guys know what this is. This is an original old school 044. I'll probably never get rid of it, but I don't run it anymore. Why friends? This thing, I don't know why friends, this carburetor on this saw, it, it tends to go really rich and I can't lean it out. There must be a problem with the with a circuit in this carb and i threw it on the shelf last year and i haven't touched it i really like this saw it's really really strong out of the box let's see if it even starts this saw was always reliable Ooh. Makes me want to fix this thing. You hear how rich it is there, friends? Not even pinning it. 
I don't know why, so I'll probably have to go to still one of these days and see how much a carburetor is for this saw. Heated handles, uh, and they work. This is a Farmer Tech handle. Uh, I've had this handle on the saw for like five years with the Farmer Tech fuel line, and I have run ethanol fuel in this, and I've had zero problems with the fuel line in this saw. So, this is a saw that got run constantly for years. This was the only bigger saw I had with a 24 inch bar and those couple of years I ran this weird cut nothing but oak. So, 044, definitely, I know why still guys love these and guys in general, these are a good saw, they're light. I'd like to get this running so I can do a, a showdown, 372 versus 044. So yeah, this one, thumbs up. Now, as I grab, I'm gonna grab two saws here, friends. One thing I don't like about stills, and, and don't, <laughs> please don't send me any hate mail. I I don't care for the air filtration. That 044, uh, every still I've owned, you gotta clean the filters out a lot. Even if you're sharp, it doesn't matter what you're cutting. I tend to, I just, I'm not used to that. Huskies just run them forever. You know, <laughs> they, they tend to not need filtration uh, changes or blow out, you know, in a day, so. It's tend to friends i ran nothing but still at the beginning of my cutting career and then i bought a 365 and this saw here and that changed my whole world friends i'm an open-minded guy and you guys know i have every brand of saw on this channel and i run all of them but i prefer certain brands over others don't we all okay friends 266 these are both 66s they are both ported um in terms of use, this is probably, this is up there with the 044 and the 562. For years, when I would go cutting, this saw comes in the truck every time. It's just, it's that saw. Now, I'm going to say, friends, this is Bucket's saw, this is my saw. This saw is substantially hotter than this saw, okay? And the reason is, this is a 266, this is actually a 272, okay? So, don't get the two... Uh, don't get the two confused. This is 72 cc's. This is 66. I had no money when I built this, friends. I don't even think I built this on the channel. I had no money with this with this saw, and I built it as cheaply as I could. Um, there's no pop up. There's just a flat top and an original uh, 266 SE top end on this that I ported. Um, I definitely didn't know things then like I do now. Um, but again, this thing's been running. This saw is picky at times. I always start this saw before I go in the woods with it. This has one of those Tillotsons that doesn't that that doesn't prime very easily. We'll see if it does it today or not. It's just one of those saws. The D-ring is just funny. This is not a high compression saw. In fact, it's a medium compression saw. I have my own opinions about compression. Uh, I get flamed for that a lot. Friends, I don't build high compression saws because I don't like this is my this is my bucking build. It pops good. It's got good compression, but I don't shoot for compression. You can't start high compression saws in the winter here. So I, for me, if I'm building a firewood saw, I can't start it in the winter. So why would I? Why would I build it? You know what I mean? And it gets really hot here in the summer, friends. Remember, and, and this is a fact, and I, I'm not I'm not poo-pooing high compression builds. There's builders that build things completely opposite from me, and I totally appreciate what they do. I watch what other guys do, and I study, and I learn, and I try and pick little elements. What I do, friends, is just what I do. Um, if you're a porter out there, and you do things completely different than me, we could still be friends, and uh, we all do our own thing. If we all did the same saws and the same builds, life would be pretty boring. Like if we all drove the same truck, right? I just do what I do. I try and show you guys what I'm doing. It's not about look what I can do. I try to help you guys with your power saw journey. So anyways, let's see if this thing goes. There you go.
Now, friends, I like this saw. Uh, it's really snappy. Trigger response on this saw is incredible. It's really fast. It's a higher RPM build. This is good for medium sized wood. It's good for limbing. I've run up to a 32. I usually run a 28 on this saw. It's happiest with that. But this saw, same thing. I've cut three foot oak with this saw, friends, and it does it no problem. Um, you guys have seen me stump with this saw on the channel. And it's only 66 cc's, friends. But what I like about these, they're really light, okay? This is a really light power head for the kind of power I get out of them. And they sound cool. This saw's as old as I am, too. So this saw's like 40 years old, friends. And it's just cool. So I tend to gravitate to this stuff. It's new enough that I can use it all day and not beat myself up. But it's old enough that it's cool. So um, this saw is about perfect. Now, friends... This saw here though, I'm gonna say, this is my new favorite build on this chassis because, because it's a bigger saw, it just has more grunt, okay? This thing pulls harder everywhere than this thing does. It's every bit of snappy and it doesn't use more fuel. It's not any heavier, right? This saw weighs the same as that saw does. It's just perfect to me. So I may even redo this saw, although some of these older builds when I was first, you know, porting with a timing wheel they mean a lot to me friends so I, I don't know i'll probably just build another 66 but this saw here is perfect for what i do for me this is the perfect saw build now i'm going to find out friends one thing about building saws here and sending them to the west coast i don't have big wood here i do but i rarely cut it right you know so and i don't have fur i don't have hemlock i don't have uh arbutus i hear that arbutus is really hard stuff really high up on the Jenka scale. I was, I was, I always read the, the hardness of certain woods. Uh, and I know fur, although it's straight grained, it, fur is fairly hard stuff, especially when it's hard. So, um, it's a guess, but this thing pulls perfectly. If this was my saw right now, friends, I am cutting with this saw steady almost daily right now. I literally have been taking this thing out almost daily and stocking firewood in the truck with it. So, this right here is the, the the best 66 build I've done. But friends, I'll still run that one all day because it's just a good saw. It, it, this thing's got so much time on it and it's been so reliable that, you know. And what do I have in this build, friends? Like, this thing was a blown up saw I bought from some guy in a Tim Hortons parking lot. You know, so anyhow. So my two favorite saws right now, and I don't even own this one, these two 266s. These are the saws that do the majority of the work, work for me. They are the perfect size. Um, I ran this after that OE 372, and that 372 is strong. The minute I fired this up, I'm like, oh yes, I like ported saws. I do. They're just snappier. This thing pulls way harder. It's faster. So, friends, this right here, this, this is my pick. Out of every saw here, this is the one I'm going to grab the most. Same with this one. And that little John Surratt I built, I didn't even put that on here because there's just so many saws that I pulled out. But these two right here, incredible. So my favorite saws right here, 266, all day, every day. They're not the fastest in big wood, but they do their job and they're light. I can live with these for a day. That's what's important to me. Now, let's get to big saws. Okay, friends, let's get into big saws. These are the kind of saws I don't run very often because I don't usually have a need for big saws. When I do though, uh, a buddy called me the other day. He has like a three to four foot uh, log he wants me to buck up for him. So we're gonna fire up one of these with a long bar on it and let it rock and roll. Out of all, I love all these saws, friends. Now this one here, you guys always ask, I'm still working on the dolly. It's one of those things that I'm kinda, I think I need to get a timing light and advance the timing on this saw i think the timing's so retarded that it, it just it, it, it won't fire friends uh this thing should rip the recoil out of your hands a big saw like that if it if the timing is nice and crisp on it it doesn't do that it does make spark though so uh for those of you that are asking now one thing i will say about this saw this saw is 100 cc's it is heavy heavy i'll run it but sparingly right friends i can't I can't swing a big saw like this around all day. That's stuff reserved for uh, men that are in better shape than me. 
I've run this saw. I'd like to get this saw back up and running. Uh, I have a new crankcase for it. It's just a matter of the time to change it. Wish we had more time, eh, friends? Pioneer P61. Um, this saw is a monster. It, uh, <laughs> it runs pretty good, friends, for what it is. I don't even know if there's gas in this thing. Yeah, there is. This thing runs pretty good for what it is. It is heavy, but it's fun to run, friends. It really is. It sounds cool. And uh, I like this saw. And these pull hard in the wood. I don't know if this thing will run. I haven't, I haven't fired it forever. Decomp. For me, these are decomp only saws. Stuff like this is hard to start in the winter, friends. couple things with this saw it leaks it leaks gasoline out of this hole friends this hole's been bent into the case i have one more idea of how to fix this before i go into swapping cases this these cases are like brand new on this saw right? look at them so i would run this all the time for for when i need a big saw because it starts good like this thing's been sitting on the shelf for a year friends but I gotta make it runnable, if you guys know what I mean, so. It's one of those saws, right? It's cool, it's a nice saw. If this was your only big saw, you'd be doing all right. This saw has no idle screw on it, so it doesn't idle very well. It needs some love, friends. Again, donated to the channel by one of you guys. I remember opening this box and I was just like, wow. This stuff is not around here, so. Again, thank you. You guys, you guys treat me good, you really do. Okay, so I I would run that, but I don't. This is the big saw, and this isn't a huge saw that I run the most often. Uh, it's my 181. Uh, my buddy TK threw this in a box for me, and uh, said, "Here, take this." He didn't he didn't know what the deal is with it, but this saw is like brand new, friends. I guess it was factory rebuilt or. Rebuilt by a dealer and then it's sat on a shelf. It's a 181 SE. It is a What year is it? 1985 by the looks of it. So uh, Pretty old power saw. It's like brand new It's got compression for days And it's just it's a good running saw friends For me around here. This is this is about as torquey of a saw as I need this will pull a three foot bar, no problem. And it just, it runs good and it's not too heavy, friends. Look at that. And it tends to run really good. Now these have a governed carb, but other than that, oh, this thing's a monster. There you go, compression wise, friends. Notice the theme, friends. The ones that I run start all the time. Now, next, okay, we're almost done here, friends. If you're a firewood cutter and you like to tinker, this is that one of those Farmer Tech 288s. I haven't jumped back into this. This is the one I've had a rough go with these. I got one that won't oil and one that has no spark. This thing died on the bench like right away, friends. Maybe the sparks come back. That would be funny. Ooh. Everybody, it's the end of the video. I know what happened. It seemed like you just turned the camera off, Tin Man. What's going on? Wasn't there another saw? I know, this is riveting stuff, friends. <laughs> I did shut the camera off. That 288 was making a racket and it was really bothering me. So what I did was I shut the camera off, grabbed the camera, the tripod, and the saw, and I went into the shop to the workbench. Next thing I knew, I was making that video of how to repair the ignition system. That's just the way it goes. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you haven't seen it, go back a couple of videos and uh, it's already up and running if you want to see what I did to make that thing run again. And I did get it running. The last video is the 394 XP. This 394 XP. Why do I run it? Because it's got good chain speed, it's got good anti-vibe, and it's lightweight. So light you can hold it at shoulder height for 30 seconds. 
Whew, it's heavy. I got to put it down. All kidding aside, I love that 394. It's just the right balance of torque, horsepower, speed in a, in a big saw. So if you're looking for a big saw, that might be the one for you. Those are getting hard to find. Often they're converted to 395s. I prefer the 394 to the 395. So do a lot of other guys. Moving on, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to show you different saws I get asked all the time. Tin Man, which saws do you like? Which ones should I buy? I can't tell you which saw to buy. Uh, a saw is such a subjective thing that it's like you, you, everybody has a different perfect saw. I'm a firewood cutter. I could do what I do with a 50cc saw. It would take longer and it did. I used to run a 50cc saw. Um, I got into ported saws because with my work and home schedule, I didn't have as much time to cut firewood. I don't have a whole day. I might have three hours. So to me, can I fall, limb, buck, and stack a whole truckload in three hours? Well, that's generally what I try and do, friends. So that's why I run ported saws. You might run them because they're fun, or maybe you're a production faller, and the more timber you put on the ground, the better. You know, maybe you're an arborist. Again, friends, I can't tell you what the perfect saw is. Um, I could just show you what I like. Maybe you like something different. That's that's the fun of this hobby. Anyhow, we're going to close it down here. I think this video has gone long enough. Stay tuned. I got lots of content planned. Uh, I want to do some more Pioneer content coming up. Um, I got something cool to show you guys. I got to find the right day because uh, something big I got something big and I need a big space to, to set it all out to show you guys. So um, that's coming up. I want to do some 372s. We got to finish Hogan's 266 and get that out the door. I got a 200T that has some carb issues, which is all too common on those. So I think we should do that. Lots of fun coming. Anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. Take her easy and I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.